from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English, and you want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 69. As more and more land is degraded, Americans look to public land to provide needed refuge for wild animals. In fact, refuge is exactly the word that's used for areas set aside for the benefit of wildlife. The United States has a whole system of wildlife refuges. Let's learn more about them in this video. We all enjoy the sight of wildlife, but the way we live takes away habitat that wildlife needs to survive. In order to make up for habitat loss, wildlife refuges have been established. In Southern Oregon and Northern California, the Upper and Lower Klamath Wildlife Refuges are here for migrating birds. My wife Liz and I spent a day exploring the Lower Klamath Wildlife Refuge. These wetlands occur naturally in this region but much land has been drained and used for farming. This area has been set aside for wildlife, mostly birds. Over a hundred years ago, wildlife conservationists had a friend in the White House, Theodore Roosevelt, who set aside federal lands for wildlife. One hundred years later, these places are more important than ever, with thousands of acres getting covered each year for shopping malls, housing developments, and parking lots. A critical factor for the Lower Klamath Wildlife Refuge is water. It's what makes this place of value to migrating birds, both the water itself and the food the water facilitates. While supporting wildlife is the main function of the refuge system, there's a lot for people who want to observe wildlife like this shelter for bird watchers. Bird lovers flock to this area of the refuge to see the winter gathering of bald eagles. It's quiet during the rest of the year. While the Lower Klamath is a lifeline for migratory birds, local birds, like these red-winged blackbirds, find the refuge a high-quality habitat for themselves. The Lower Klamath Refuge struggles with getting enough water a report by Jess Burns in Jefferson Monthly Magazine reveals the challenge of receiving adequate water from the government, resulting in far fewer birds benefiting from the refuge. Water from nearby reservoirs is claimed by farmers, fishermen, and Native American tribes, a balancing act that usually leaves part of the refuge dry. We spent our time along the wet areas hoping to see more wildlife there. We weren't disappointed. We watch grebes like this one and ducks. These are aquatic birds. Everything they do seems to depend on water. Birds like grebes and ducks are called waterfowl. The Lower Klamath Refuge was established via executive order by President Theodore Roosevelt in 1908 as the nation's first waterfowl refuge. There are over 500 refuges for wildlife in the United States. Most have websites you can visit to learn what each one offers. 
Raptors like these are very much a part of the Klamath Lake refuges. Education is an important part of the mission of the System of Wildlife Refuges in the United States. That's a mission updated by Congress several times since that system was organized at the dawn of the 20th century. The Lower Klamath Lake Wildlife Refuge takes that function seriously with interpretive signage, a great visitor center, and programs for schools. The Lower Klamath has an unexpected arrangement with local farmers. Farmers can raise crops in the refuge in exchange for the refuge using farmland to provide refuge for migrating birds. This arrangement can help with the refuge's greatest challenge, getting enough water. These ducks lined up to watch the water intake as if making sure enough water was there. There are abundant roads through the Lower Klamath Refuge, giving access to motorists and to people on bikes. This road took Liz and me to an awesome sight, coots. Coots are migratory birds, often found in wetlands. Coots from the Pacific Northwest can be found as far south as Panama in the winter. American coots eat algae and other aquatic plants, as well as some small animals. Coots stay with the same mate for life. Coots build several nests on the water for laying eggs. The American coot defends the eggs and chicks from predators, although muskrats are a danger. Coots are also called mud hens, the name adopted by a Toledo baseball team. In Louisiana, coots are known as pool dews. They're not as eagerly hunted as ducks, but they sometimes make their way into the gumbo pot. The American coot is listed as least concern in terms of extinction danger. Scientists use coots to determine pollution problems in wetland environments. During our visit, Liz and I saw a familiar sight of geese. Its location on the Pacific Flyway makes the Lower Klamath a popular refuge for migrating geese. People flock to the refuge in winter, although geese have little to do with that. Bald eagles gather here in January on their southward migration, attracting excited bird watchers from all over the country. In fact, winter is when the Lower Klamath Refuge has the most impressive populations of migrating birds. Another refuge on the Pacific Flyway is the Don Edward San Francisco Bay Wildlife Refuge. Along with the Coyote Hills Regional Park, birds and other wildlife find refuge here. We watched egrets spear some meals here, hunting the shallow waters for fish, frogs, and other small animals. It's not surprising to see that this refuge consists of wetlands. It depends on a reliable source of water. This refuge receives numerous visitors during the migrating season, owing to its location near this large population center. Well, that one has some sort of pine. In terms of bird numbers, there are very few in the summer. We didn't need to see a lot of birds, though. This one put on quite a show. He stirs up the bottom with his feet. When the macro and bird or bird or whatever comes up to the surface, then he spears it. This technique seems to work as well on the mud flats as in the water. Watch it scoop up another part of its meal. We saw swallows, dippers, hawks, and other species, but this bird held our interest for the longest time. We even learned a thing or two about its techniques for flushing out food. Although it's inside of the Dumbarton Bridge, this refuge seems a world apart from this densely populated urban area. 